for India-Maldives relations. Let's first go across to Ambassador Prabhu Dayal, who's joining me as a guest on this chat. Ambassador Dayal, thank you for speaking to Mira now. The 180-degree turnaround in the stance coming in from Mohammed Muizu, a man who came to power on a very India-out campaign to a point where the Bonhomi with Prime Minister Modi earlier today at Rashtrapati Bhavan at Rajkart and now in the joint statement is very clearly visible. And we've heard from the uh, from the from uh, Mr. Muizu, and he only had praises to sing and gratitude to give to India for its help towards the island nation. This is Ambassador Dayal, a very big diplomatic turnaround and a very big diplomatic success. Well, you're right in saying that it is like a 180 degrees turn in the policy of the Maldives towards India. Now, let me recall that some steps taken by the Maldives government took the bilateral ties to a low point towards the end of last year. I would also recall that who is due? who became president in November 2023, did so on the back of an India out campaign. And he demanded the removal of some 85 Indian military personnel who were deployed in the Maldives to operate three aircraft. He wanted them out. So he sent signals that he was pivoting his island sharply towards China. And eyebrows were raised in New Delhi after he decided to break tradition but by not making India his first foreign visit after taking office in, in November. Instead, he went to Turkey and then to China, which was a diplomatic shift. Now, I think that what is happening is a significant change in, in Maldives' policy towards India. In fact, a statement made by Buzu's office uh, before his visit said that his discussions in India would focus on strengthening bilateral cooperation and further enhancing the long-standing relationship between the two countries. So clearly, Maldives is determined to uh, stem the tide of the uh, sort of adverse re relations and wants to change the direction. Now, we must understand what has happened, uh, why... Um, Maldives is changing its policy. You know, let me mention that Muizu's visit is taking place in the midst of major financial trouble in the Maldives. He's paying a visit to India in the hope of seeking a bailout. I'll be very frank about it. Uh, the visit is coming at a time when the Maldives Absolutely. is staring at an economic crisis with fear of a debt default. Uh, many experts believe that... Uh, the current visit of Buizru, uh, reflects that the Maldives can't afford to ignore India, which is a giant neighbor. Uh, I may mention that uh, uh, there are reports that the foreign exchange reserves of the Maldives now are only about $440 million, uh, which are just enough for one and a half months of import. And uh, the credit agency, Moody's, has uh, downgraded uh, Maldives' credit rating, saying that default risks have risen materially. I may also mention that Maldives has a sizable debt to both India and China, about $1.4 okay. billion dollars to each of these two countries. And Moizu had been saying on several occasions that China has given a green signal for deferring debt payments for five years, but frankly, no clear uh, directive in this regard has come from Beijing. So, Mojo is turning to India for help in this financial crisis. And India has uh, always been a good friend of the Maldives. And it, uh, I think it remains to be seen uh, what sort of outcome is there from these talks. All right. Ambassador Dayal, stay on with us. Let me also go across to my other guest joining me at this point, Aditya Shivamurti, Associate Fellow of the Observer Research Foundation. Aditya, thank you for joining us on Mirror Now. I'd like you to come in on what Ambassador Dayal was just referring to in towards the end of his opening statement, that essentially Maldives is realizing the fickleness of China as a strategic ally and has decided to try and be at least equidistant, if not inch further towards New Delhi than compared to Beijing. In terms of the strategy over the Indian Ocean here, how significant is this 
potential realignment of Maldives foreign policy for India at a time when there's always war games going on in order to control the Indian Ocean? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you hear and uh, see me the, if, if I'm all right on that? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can hear and see you perfectly. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, no, I think it's it's uh, uh, it's obviously a good trend that we are seeing uh, Muizu have a uh, first state visit to India. Obviously, that said, it's it's almost been a year that he was elected into president and it took him a year to come to India, which shows that the last one year has not been uh, free of obstacles, of course. Uh, but what I sense is also the fact that I, I rightly agree that China tried to show... Um, there was an overleaning approach towards China in the early three, four months, and then we saw China didn't offer much in terms of its promises. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would not really say that Muizu in itself, is, there is a complete U-turn. I think there is a safer approach that is going on to be that uh, keep India and China both close because you don't know who you need the most at this point in time. But I would rather not say that, uh, you know, uh, that this is, this is a complete U-turn. Uh, for the reason because China, uh, Maldives owes around 1.2 billion to China right now. Uh, and with India, these loans are yet increasing, but they have not yet matured. So that is something important we'll have to keep in mind. I think the Chinese uh, loans have matured and they, they are continued to be repaid, but the Indian loans are still uh, on, on uh, you know, increasing because they have not yet matured and India is still investing in some mega infrastructure projects. So I think in this regard, both India and China have their own uh, benefits, I would say, for Muizu. And I think that is why he's trying to balance uh, China with India, I mean, India with China now, because earlier he's, he thought or he presumed that China would offer a big assistance, which has not been the case. Um, mm. And I think with India, there is a big expectation that uh, after his visit, uh, there might be a fresh direction in terms of economic assistance or a kind of uh, economic package or economic financial assistance that India could offer. But I would not say that uh, the story ends here. I think this is just the beginning and uh, probably this is a good beginning. What we have seen from India is a good strategic patience and a, a strong diplomatic game at play. And uh, I think in the going days, uh, in the days ahead, we, we might see this relationship going further and it might take a bit more of a time uh, to actually have that kind of equation that we had with Solis time. Fair enough, Aditya. I get your point about this not being a complete 180 degree in terms of foreign policy for Maldives as well. But if you look at the sentiment Maldives or at least uh, President Moise's government has had towards India, from the India Out campaign, which he used to run to power, to a point where he said that India is a very valued and a close ally and Indians are most welcome to come to Maldives as tourists here and we look forward to hosting them. Is there also a bit of economics at play? Because one of the sectors which was impacted or at least was a matter of concern for Maldives after that entire diplomatic setback that happened a few months ago was the impact on Maldivian tourism in terms of the Indians deciding not to go to that island nation and go to Lakshadweep or other places. Is that also something which has forced this more conciliatory stand coming out from the Maldivian president? Okay, I think we have lost Aditya there at a very critical juncture and we'll try and get him back at this point. But uh, before I, uh, while I wait for him to come back, let me go across to Ambassador Dayal as well. Ambassador Dayal, this is something which will be a shot in the arm for India's foreign policy because the concern has been of late in the last few, mo in the last few months here. Uh, developments across India's neighbour, particularly when you look at what the regime change in Sri Lanka, then the regime change in Bangladesh, has surrounded India with and not to mention the regime changes in Nepal, they've all surrounded India with governments and neighbours, with governments which have a lot of unpleasant or at least uneasy uh, proximity to China, uneasy for India at least. In this aspect here, is this perhaps a template which shows to, to the world and especially to observers in India is when, that even a recalcitrant neighbour can be made to bend over a bit and be a, become a bit more favourable to you or at least be a bit more equidistant to you through a combination of good diplomatic manoeuvring and of course China being China. Well, you know, uh, most people feel that India has been very patient towards the Maldives. Because India knew that sooner or later, Maldives would itself realize the folly of sort of policy yeah. that it was pursuing and would try to reestablish good relations with India. In fact, this is what has happened. Uh, your other guest was saying it is not a 180 degrees turn or a U-turn in the policy of uh, the Maldives. 
But frankly speaking, if you follow the Indian media, by and large, people are of the view that there is a very significant change in the policy of the Maldives. Because on the one hand, Huizu was saying India out, and that was the basis of his campaign. And at the same mm. time, he was wanting the Indian military personnel to leave immediately because he didn't want their presence on Maldivian soil. And now, the sort of statements which he has made in the context of his current visit are completely at variance. Uh, I think uh, this itself shows that the government of Maldives, especially President Buizu, is uh, himself cognizant of the fact that good relations with India work to their advantage. Let me also recall that the hostile statements sometimes became very obnoxious when they came from the Maldivian leaders. When Prime Minister Modi visited the Lakshadweep Islands, two of the Maldivian ministers made extremely hostile and obnoxious comments, which naturally did not go down well with people here in India. And uh, while those two ministers were suspended, it is only now that they have been sacked because President Muju realizes that he could be visiting India while those two ministers have not been specifically sacked. So the sacking comes in the context of his visit, but there is no doubt that we will not forget the sort of hostility that was exhibited. And of course, because we are a much larger neighbor, we will be generous. And if Maldives needs, needs assistance, we will be quite forthcoming, I think, in that regard. Let me also mention that uh, Maldives perhaps realizes it's geopolitical important for us because the Chinese have been trying to establish yeah. bases there. The Chinese want to establish a foothold in the Maldives. And naturally, that does not work too well for our own maritime interests. So both sides have an interest in good relations. Both sides want to improve the tone and tenor of the relationship. And I think the current visit of President Buizu will be seen in that context. All right. Uh, I'm, I think Aditya is back with us at this point. Aditya, we lost your uh, feed at a very critical time, but I'll just repeat my question if you didn't get it. How mm -hmm. much was economics also a factor in playing with this, especially when it comes to tourism? Because, yes, there might not have been a 180 degree in terms of foreign policy with regards to China, but definitely 180 degree in terms of optics coming from India out to a point where there have been open overtures to India as an ally and Indian tourists as well. Was a threat to the wallet in terms of Indian tourists not coming to Maldives anymore and going to other nations, other sites like Lakshwadeep, also a factor in this turnaround in the statements coming in from Maldives? Right. So I think uh, Indian tourists, yes, they're definitely that is one of the factors. I would not say it is the most important factor. But yes, economically speaking, I think uh, Maldives is very vulnerable at this given point in time, given that foreign reserves have dwindled to a greater extent. Um, and, uh, you know, there is a uh, huge, huge uh, you know, fuel and food inflation that is on the surge and the uh, foreign reserves are consistently depleting with also the increase, increasing maturity of Chinese loans. So, yes, uh, that is one of the reasons why Maldives is an economic crunch and why it needs India's assistance more than it needs at any other point of time. Now, as far as the tourism is concerned, look, tour tourism is a primary um, generator of Maldives revenues. And once Indian tourists stopped going to the Maldives, uh, there was an immediate thinking in the Maldives side that they could get Chinese tourists to fill in uh, what Indian tourists were supposed to do. Uh, but now I think there is a realization that Chinese tourists are not perennial tourists like Indian tourists are. Indian tourists have visited Maldives even during the off uh, you know, travel season. And that has consistently kept the tourists, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, resorts operating and that has also consistently kept the revenues increasing for a long, long time. In fact, that is one of the reasons why the Maldivian tourism minister was here uh, a while ago trying to ask if the number of flights could be increased, trying to ask if, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if the number of tourists from India could be increased. And there were a lot of uh, rallying done in three major cities in India. Right? But I don't think any of them has come to fructification yet. Uh, and uh, they also tried uh, you know, bringing this narrative of India in from India out again. There was a radical departure of bringing Indian tourists in, calling India in. Uh, this campaign Absolutely. was something that was called India in. That is not picked up yet. 
right? So uh, from the Maldivian side, there are definitely uh, thinkings, not just in terms of bringing in tourists, but also in terms of um, uh, bringing in economic assistance and economic aid. Now, one of the proposals that was also being discussed a while ago was uh, to trade uh, in local currency with India. If that comes in, that also eases a lot of their financial uh, mm. burdens as well. So I think in that manner, uh, approaching India has been crucial. Uh, and uh, seeking assistance from India has been crucial because the Chinese have not been able to do so. And also just another point before I uh, uh, end, end this, uh, answer your question, uh, is the fact that there were a lot of okay. hopes that Chinese will offer new loans. Uh, now they have made promises of debt restructuring, but again, nothing have come as such. Uh, but there were a lot of hopes that Chinese will offer new loans. But that hasn't happened. But on the other hand, India has continued to offer whatever loans it had promised in the previous government. And India has continued to offer to build uh, the Greater Malay Connectivity Project Bridge. And such kind of assistance and high-impact community development projects have been happening. So I think this is uh, these certain signalings from India have worked well in its favour at this point in time. And Muisu is now reliant on India for economic assistance right. and, uh, 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 you know, uh, economic relief in the All country. All right. So as, as the popular saying goes, look how the turntables. Thanks a lot, uh, Master Dayal and also Aditya for joining us with your valued inputs on this short afternoon debate. We are headed now for a short break, but more news and updates continue with me on the other side. Stay tuned. <laughs>